Warning, this content may be upsetting or disturbing to some audiences. I put my infant daughter in the closet, shut the door and walked away. I'm so overwhelmed. I haven't really slept in 8 weeks. That's how old my daughter is. She's a beautiful little girl, but she screams and screams and screams. I do everything to console her. I make sure she is fed, dry, not in pain and comfortable. But she almost never stops screaming. My husband left this weekend for a business trip and I was alone with her for the first time. It was going okay this morning, but then the floodgates opened. I held her, rocked her, bounced her but nothing worked. I wanted to shake her. I'm ashamed to type this, but I wanted to shake my baby. I thought I was about to have a nervous breakdown. I was so fed up that I strapped her into her car seat, placed her in our coat closet and shut the door. She was still screaming and I shut the door on her. I set a one hour alarm, went upstairs and collapsed into my bed. I wouldn't say I slept, more like I instantly went unconscious. An hour later my alarm went off and I sprung up and ran downstairs to her. She was sleeping and no longer crying. I picked her up and held her and just started sobbing. It's too much. I'm a terrible mother. I can't handle this. Fuck everyone who says that autism is a gift. It's hell. Throw away. Since my main account is used to promote a podcast and a community and I try to keep my personal life separated from the podcast life. My four, soon to be five year old son, is diagnosed moderate severe autistic. I guess, depending on the spectrum scale or whatever you use, it would be ASD 2.5 or something similar. He's enrolled in a typical school day program, fortunately at the elementary school just down the street from us. And it's actually a good school. The three women who run the class that he's in are saints. I'm not. I can't stand that kid. I seriously can't. The hitting, biting, scratching, crashing down on me WWE style when I'm just trying to sit on the couch. The amount of cuts, bruises, and times he's injured me are getting to be too damn much. I get that he doesn't get that he's hurting other people. The wiring isn't there. His older brother who's seven is suffering for it too, since it's constantly a litany of don't hit back, don't respond in kind or get vengeance, it doesn't do any good. He's gone from being a sweet, awesome little guy into someone who's majorly angry, a lot, and I can't blame him. I'm right there with him. His little brother damn near broke my nose head butting me when I was trying to just get a shirt on him, and I almost blew up and started hitting him. I recognize that, again, it wouldn't do anything other than result in CPS probably taking him away, but if it was an adult, I'd probably have ended up in jail on assault charges. I'm at the point where I just can't do it anymore. He wakes up screaming in the middle of the night, less if he's sleeping in my bed. I feel guilty every time I'm late at work, go to the gym, go run errands, or anything like that since it means my wife has to be home alone with him, putting up with the same behaviors and trying to play referee. He makes it impossible to do anything, even something as simple as folding laundry, since he just has this compulsion to wreck anything that's organized. Folding laundry? It's going to be strewn across the house five minutes later. If I wouldn't feel like the biggest piece of shit and failure on the planet, I'd say fuck it and leave. I can understand why there are so many single moms of autistic kids. It's literal hell. I have the misfortune to live in Nevada, home of the 49th lowest level of compensation for ABA therapy specialists, so the way it lists to start are minimum 6 months, a year plus depending on who you can see with your health insurance. And the best part? I can't say a fucking word of this to anyone I know. Because then I'm a horrible person. Fuck autism. My boss pissed me off so I'm catfishing his wife. My boss is generally a dick. I noticed his wife, who also works at the company, came up as a recommended friend on Snapchat, I copied the username and added her on my burner Snapchat. After a few messages and a few fake selfies she has told me she is single and sent some damn good reveling pictures. I feel a bit guilty now but damn she is hot. I am responsible for the deaths of several people. Around 4 years ago, I was a vendor on the darknet. It was a relatively short-lived thing, I was just doing it because I was too lazy to get a job and at the time didn't want to settle for the 9 to 5 thing. I wanted to start my own business, and use the drug money as a startup. I had been using myself for years, along with it I met lots of people into the dealing scene, and eventually started dealing myself. I have a lot of anxiety though, so I hated meeting up with people in parking lots and I definitely didn't want anyone to know where I lived. That's when I read about the Silk Road, and Ross Ulbricht being caught. Got obsessed with the idea of it, got obsessed with learning OPSIC, all with the goal of eventually using my connections to start up my store. 
Well, after a couple of months I did. I started my store with three drugs, ketamine, meth, and some outdoor weed my buddy was getting for super cheap. All was going good for a few months, had a couple thousand get stolen in an exit scam, but I had about $25,000 saved at that point so it didn't ruin my life like a few vendors I knew of. Eventually, I met a local connect that came into town only once a week, but had anything I wanted. Mescaline, LSD, mushrooms, PCP, even. And. Fentanyl. At the time, people weren't really cutting heroin with fentanyl. I mean, I'm sure people did platy, but it was not nearly as commonplace now. People just. Did fentanyl. And still do. I put all my addresses into an Excel spreadsheet along with their name, zip code, order, along with the amount. At the time, I was selling some super white powdered mescaline. The fentanyl was also a white powder. Very similar consistency. Long story short, my Excel messed up, or I messed up, and about 7 people's mescaline orders were filled in as fentanyl orders. They all went out, I didn't notice and kept doing my thing for a few days. After about 5 days, someone contacted me and told me their friend died from my mescaline. I immediately called bullshit, and went to check my order log and scale up how much I had of my mescaline left. Well, I had about 11 grams more than I should have. I still don't know how the hell it could have happened. I wasn't a user, but I was definitely high off dabs. I went to check my order log on the market to see if anyone had finalized on their purchase, and a couple of them were. But none from a specific day. Including the person that messaged me. No one that had purchased mescaline that day had finalized their orders. The market I was on also had a feature to see the user's last activity, and none of them had logged in in at least 3 days. Most 2 days. I immediately deactivated my vendor account. I didn't even need confirmation, I knew what happened. I knew I just killed several people. I sold the rest of my drugs, converted my bitcoin to cash, and moved the hell away. Didn't speak to anyone for weeks. Found a job in a restaurant, living in a city I always wanted to. I haven't touched drugs since that day. I haven't had anything to do with that life since then. I still think about them. Every night. I saved their names and googled them a few days later. I was able to find info on 4 customers that definitely died. One customer shared it with a friend. They both died. I don't know why I'm even posting this, mainly because I have no one to tell, and even if I did, I don't think I could. I spend my days sober. Clocking into work. Clocking out of work. Coming home. Playing video games. I'm a complete recluse. People I used to know have distanced themselves immensely, and I know it's because I'm a shell of my former self. I can't help it. Could I even tell a therapist about this? I don't feel like I deserve to be alive. Am I really living anyway? I don't even know anymore. Maybe this will help me feel better. I'm a pastor who doesn't believe in God. Here I sit on another Sunday morning. I love the people I minister to. I believe that there are some really good principles in the Bible, and some really awful ones. So I feel okay about the message of love and hope that I get to deliver. I push back against the hate and homophobia and judgmental nature of so much contemporary American Christianity. But I don't believe the underlying myth, and I have to pretend that I do. Overall, I believe I'm doing more good than harm, but there's a dishonesty at the center of it that I have to try to ignore. I'm not economically dependent on ministry work. I work outside the church and do my ministry work on a voluntary basis. I used to get a, very, small stipend but gave it up a few years ago when I no longer needed it. I wonder all the time whether I am lying, or just withholding, or whether that's a BS distinction, I strive only to say what I believe, but it's a stretch. When I say God is love, I really mean love is God, the highest power. Certainly not Christian orthodoxy. I try hard to teach only what I believe, love, grace, care for others, etc. There are not many other forums where I could deliver that message in the same way. Not an excuse, just a fact. I appreciate the concern of those who feel I'm defiling the faith. I disagree, but humbly. They may be right. I would hate to hurt those who have trusted me. I prayed once for my daughter to die, and it came true. So when I was 20, I started dating this girl. We dated for 3 years, and although she loved me like crazy, I never really loved her at all. The reasons for that are a different story. About 2.5 years into the relationship, we found out she was pregnant. I didn't use a condom once and that's it. After about 6 to 7 months, we found out that she has a damaged reproductive system, and she had to stay in the hospital. 
I would bring her food and stuff every day after work and basically live in that hospital for two weeks. She wasn't allowed to get up or anything. I was by her side through the whole thing. One day out of nowhere, her water broke. She was about to deliver the baby when we talked to some of the hospital staff. They explained that since she was being delivered at that point, she hasn't developed lungs yet, and if we decided to let the hospital staff resuscitate her, she could have permanent brain damage. We decided that if she is born and she is not breathing, we would not resuscitate her. Here's the messed up part. This entire time from the point I found out she was pregnant, I was hoping that something bad would happen so that I wouldn't be stuck in this relationship forever. I started praying that if there was a God, he would get me out of this situation. When the baby was born, I watched her turn blue, then purple, then black right in front of me. I watched in horror as she struggled to breathe without lungs. It was and still is the most horrifying thing I have ever seen. I've lived with this secret my entire life. I've never told a single person. It has given me depression to the point where I've tried to commit suicide, incredible anxiety, and nightmares that I've had ever since. I've been through mental hospitals and therapists as well. I wouldn't wish anything like this on anyone. Thank you for listening and helping me get this off my chest. I have conversations with my dead son in the car. My 13 year old died in Peru after getting caught in a whirlpool. We were on vacation. His mom, my ex, blamed me for his death and our other son also blames me so he doesn't speak to me. He's now 13 too. I don't force him to see me. When I drive home from work, I pretend that I am talking to my son about how his day was at school, what kind of music he wants to listen to, what he wants for dinner, etc. That is why I haven't gotten a new car. There are just too many memories.